What's up, Tubes? It's your boy, JBlaze06 here, giving you another exciting review on the Black Oni channel. I'm going to be reviewing Guilty Gear XR this time, and I'm personally excited about this because I love fighting games. So Guilty Gear has been a prominent fighting game series since 1998, when it first hit shelves. Since then, Street Fighter 4 arguably revived the fighting game scene in 2008. Since then, companies like Arc System Works were confident in releasing new IPs like Blast Blue. It's been seven years since the last Guilty Gear game released in the US. So, is Guilty Gear X Art Sign a triumphant return? Or does their special attack whiff, leaving them wide open for a fierce punish? Again, this is JBlaze06, and we're gonna find out in this review. Black Oni. Let's first discuss presentation. Part of me wishes every fighting game could look this good. It's a wonderful blend of 2D and 3D, whereas the cel shaded 3D models look like they're illustrated sprites. This game utilizes the Unreal Engine 3 to achieve this effect. It's quite the testament to how versatile that engine is and how talented Team Red is when given sophisticated and flexible tools at their disposal. Speaking of, the art direction is strong. The colors are vibrant, character designs are unique and imaginative, and the game exudes an overall highly stylized aesthetic. Additionally, the animations are silky smooth at 60 frames per second, which means movement is very fluid. It's impressive and really makes you wonder why we don't see more fighting games take on this kind of approach, but then one must realize that if they did, it would take away from what makes Guilty Gear XR so special. The menu interface for non-ranked online lobbies is the only complaint I have about the visual presentation. Perhaps it's supposed to replicate the feel of going to a real arcade and playing with a group of people, but the colors, the actual layout of the menu, and the simple fact that you can't even invite people, plus the rooms themselves, they're all a bit overwhelming and confusing. Obviously, those who wish to delve into the experience will overlook this, but it can be both daunting and cumbersome to newcomers and people just looking to jump in. Heavy metal music lovers will feel right at home with this anime inspired metal soundtrack. While I can't call myself a metalhead, the soundtrack is quite fitting for the over the top stylized and action packed action on screen. I actually like a lot of the music in the game. The intro track, Soul and Kai's reunion, and the arcade mode ending track are my favorites. It's both varied and consistent in its use of appropriate music for each level, scenario, and super mode. The voice acting is also really well done, although Soul Bad Guy does have a sort of forced voice. You supposed to be a zombie or something? Still, each character has something interesting about them to make them distinct and memorable in some way. From Slayer's Scottish accent and gentleman-like demeanor, to Chip's arrogant attitude and obsession with being the president. The sound effects are also super punchy, with each hit reverberating different, interesting sound effects. Now let's talk about the gameplay. Guilty Gear XR is not an easy game. It's not easy for newcomers or those who have previously played Guilty Gear games. That in itself is its biggest strength and weakness. People who haven't previously invested in a Guilty Gear game have very little incentive outside of curiosity to dive into this game because there are so many nuances and details that are crucial to understanding why you're getting your face pounded in so badly when it actually does happen. Conversely, it is incredibly rewarding to be able to pick up on certain techniques and methods after spending time experimenting with the game. While it's easy to pick up and button mash your way to victory against the average player, it's very difficult to compete with anyone who has a solid understanding of the mechanics if you don't. The difference between experienced players and noobs is fairly stark as a direct result. Even those who are fairly versed in fighting games may become frustrated with this game due to there not being a Guilty Gear game in so long. Characters move quickly and the action is frantic. Again, the action on screen can be overwhelming to some, but it's poetry in motion. When you watch a high level player at work, it's a beautiful display of seemingly deliberate and calculated strings of attacks. Characters have standard light slash, heavy slash, and kick attacks, but also have the ability to perform a launcher called Dust, which depending on your input will either knock them back or into the air for follow-up attacks. Every character has super attacks, 
with some doing a quick combo or temporarily transforming into a stronger version of themselves. They also have the ability to enter the insta-kill state, where they can launch an attack that will automatically end the round in one hit. It's a mechanic that always gives you a fighting chance, even against those who are blatantly destroying you. It can turn the tide of any match and really heightens the tension while adding a layer of gambling for every match. It's very well implemented in a beautifully animated mechanic. The game has several core modes, arcade, versus, online, MOM, and story. Story mode has me a bit baffled as to what the decision making process was behind it. Not because it isn't interesting or it's because it's bad, but because you don't actually play anything in it. The story primarily follows the character Soul Bad Guy, but features many characters from previous Guilty Gear games including Kai Kisk, Sin, Chip, Eno, Mei, Venom, and several others. Some that are missing in terms of playable characters are Dizzy, Jin, Johnny, and Biken. It really bums me out to not see an even larger cast of characters I've seen before return in playable form, even if it's just for nostalgia's sake. Yet the new characters are welcome and really interesting in their own rights. The story is a bit confusing, especially if you have no previous knowledge about the game, so I recommend doing some reading about the basic terms and elements that make the story come together. The story is very fascinating with several layers of depth and backstory about each character and their relationships. It even involves a sad love story that never really gets delved into too deeply, which is a shame. It's a missed opportunity to show some real depth in Frederick and Arya's characters. All in all, the story does an adequate job of entertaining, but there were many opportunities to delve deeper. Another missed opportunity is the execution of the story mode. It is true that while you can enter arcade mode and fight through a series of opponents with a cutscene at the beginning and end of the journey, it only serves to set up the events leading up to the actual story mode. But story mode has you literally just sitting through a series of cutscenes compiled into an anime movie. Obviously the game is beautiful and the production values are high, keeping the experience feeling compelling and interesting, but the fact that there is no actual gameplay has me totally confused. A possible solution to that would have been to incorporate gameplay techniques and lessons into the story mode battles in between cutscenes to somewhat replicate what happens in the actual story. It felt like a disjointed experience, but at least the story being told is interesting. Now let's move on to the lasting appeal. Guilty Gear XR Sign is a blast to play, but only after you get over that initial butt whooping hump. It's easy to pick up and play, but a total pain to master. In that way, it's genius, but at the same time, it creates a very clear line of proficiency and helplessness. People who put the time in will genuinely feel a sense of reward for their efforts, but those who aren't willing to overcome that initial hurdle will find themselves burnt out and discouraged. The game features several modes to keep you entertained, standard versus mode, and online, share play included, which means you always have someone to play with. While I found myself really drawn to this game, I'll admit it's not for everyone so I say this with the intention of not misleading everyone into thinking it will click for them. The good news is that there's a free demo available on the PlayStation Store. The bottom line is, buy. Here are the reasons why. The good, there are top notch visuals, some of the best fighting game visuals out there. There's a very deep and rewarding fighting system and the net code is pretty strong, complete with frame delay information. Now let's move on to the bad. It's easy to get pummeled if you don't have a foundation of the mechanics. Many characters from the past are just straight up missing. And story mode leaves a lot to be desired, despite awesome production values. Thank you guys for watching this review. I hope you had a great time and you learned something interesting and you kind of looked at this game a little differently because of the review. If you did like it, remember to press the like button and subscribe to stay tuned to everything else going on on the channel. Again, stay tuned, share with your friends, and leave a comment down below letting me know what you liked about the review, what you like about Guilty Gear, or what you like about fighting games in general. And as always, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Game on, J-Blaze out.